Uh, let's uh, open uh, with a word of prayer, and then we'll jump right into it. Well, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you that we can be here today. Lord, we thank you for this bright, beautiful, crisp, cool morning. Lord, we thank you that uh, you say you will never leave us or forsake us. <laughs> Lord, that means that we can trust in you in everything. Yeah, and that's uh, going to be our topic today, yeah. trusting in you. So, Lord, uh, we just ask, invite your Holy Spirit to be here this morning and give me the words to speak. Yeah. And uh, open up our hearts, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. Hallelujah. Well, uh, this is week Eight, so we're three fourths of the way through uh, our course here, and uh, this morning uh, we're going to be talking about fear. And uh, uh, hasn't fear gripped the world over these past two years, in particular? But uh, just a reminder of last week we uh, talked about envy and jealousy. And uh, just here's the ministry list from that. If you missed that session, you can catch, uh, catch the video on strongholds.ccflindale.org. And um, um, you can catch the whole, whole teaching on envy and jealousy. Uh, we started with, uh, started with breaking, I mean, uh, with uh, bitterness, uh, which is the number one uh, stronghold in a lot of people's lives because they refuse to forgive. But uh, and that, of course, leads to everything. You know, people say, uh, I'm, I'm just an angry person. No, you're not. You're an unforgiving person. Really? I mean, that's the, the root is unforgiveness. So, uh, an angry person is an unforgiving person. They have had some hurts in their life that they haven't let go of. <clears throat> anyway, we're talking about fear. And uh, like all of the strongholds, uh, this is uh, Satan's attempt to overthrow God's plan for your life. <laughs> I like uh, Bill, Bill Bright uh, when he was alive. He, when he would uh, talk to somebody about the Lord, he would always say, God has a wonderful plan for your life. And the longer I live, the more I know that, <laughs> right? <laughs> he does have a wonderful plan <laughs> for our life. So uh, we shouldn't uh, listen to the enemy, but uh, we should listen, listen to God because he does have a wonderful plan for our lives. Okay, so fear. What does fear, uh, fear do? And uh, some of the ways we can defeat fear, of course we'll be talking more about that as we go through this, but fear tries to project the future uh, with all the what ifs. Well, what if this happens? We can't do that because this might happen. I can't leave the kids because they might get into trouble or whatever it happens to be, uh, right? It, it just, you're projecting all of the negatives that could uh, ever pass, possibly happen in your life. And uh, uh, as you project, sometimes those negatives come true just because we're projecting it and we're expecting it to happen. But uh, faith will always <laughs> defeat fear um, fear and faith are incompatible. <laughs> so uh, either you'll have faith or you'll have fear, but you won't have both. Um, and you can have faith in one area of your life, but have fear in another area in your life. You know, so it's, um, in that case, you're a double-minded person. And yeah. we'll talk a little bit about that. So, <laughs> so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. One of the things that uh, I, I tell the guys in prison, look, if you're having trouble memorizing, and I have trouble memorizing, if I just repeat it in my mind, I can't memorize, you know, squat. 
But if I say it out loud, <laughs> it comes. And it's like, okay, I just have to say it out loud two or three times and I've got it. But uh, so hearing, something about hearing the Word of God. And if you speak the Word of God, you're also hearing the Word of God. So you get a double whammy. You have to put your mind in gear in order to uh, speak the Word, but then you get to the other end of it. So Romans 10, 17. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. If you already see it, you don't need faith. It's already there, right? <laughs> but faith is the substance of things hoped for. So we choose either fear or faith, uh, but without faith, it is impossible. Isn't that interesting? Without faith, it's impossible to please God, to please Him, for he who comes to God must believe that He is, and uh, that He is a water rewarder of those who casually seek Him. Diligently, diligently seek Him. <laughs> He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And the more we seek him, uh, the, more, uh, the more faith we have, the more we believe his word. Now, there's one other thing that is tied to faith, and that's obedience. You know, if you're faithful in the little things, God can trust you with the bigger things. So obedience, if you hear God say, I want you to do such and such, and you don't do it, you're diminishing your faith. But if you hear God's word and you do it, your faith increases because he shows you that, hey, I am trustworthy. And when I tell you to do something and you do it, well done, my good and faithful servant, right? So uh, you know, faith and obedience and hearing the word and all of these things uh, tie in with faith. So uh, we need to choose to have faith, for I say, though the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. So this scripture is saying that, okay, you know, all of our faiths aren't the same. We're not at the same place in the level of our faith, are we? And who gives us the faith? Who gives us the faith? It says, God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. <laughs> but even believing in the Lord Jesus Christ... Even that belief, that faith came from Hearing. God, came from God. That faith, you see, I mean, it's, it's amazing <laughs> what God has done. He has, he gives us everything that we need. Even when we came to Christ, it was him that was implanting through the Holy Spirit the faith that we needed to believe in him. So when you need more measure of faith, the first of all, you got to ask him, <laughs> Lord, you know, just like, gee, I want to believe that this is going to happen, but Lord, give me the faith to believe. Is that, is that so difficult to ask? I mean, we need to ask, right? Lord, give me the faith. <laughs> okay. Uh, faith takes work. It doesn't just come. Right. Initially, it just comes. I mean, when, when, we find, when finally we, we surrender and accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, then it's like, wow, this burden has been lifted. I'm okay. Yeah, God is good. And then all of a sudden it gets hard and it's, it takes work <laughs> to go the next mile or 10. Uh, some go from uh, faith, to, I mean, from fear to faith faster than others. Uh, it's a process. Uh, some, for whatever reason, say, 
Oh yeah, okay, I see the error of my ways. Okay, I, I reject that in the name of Jesus. And uh, you know, their faith is built in the way they go. But others, other times it takes, uh, takes more work. Um, so uh, also with faith, and it doesn't with fear or with faith, whatever you're believing in, whatever you want, doesn't necessarily come about, does it? You know, uh, I'd like to drive a red Ferrari, but you know, am I going to be able to do that in my lifetime? Maybe I don't know, maybe not. But uh, I'm not putting my faith in that, right? <laughs> The only reason why I say that is because uh, there's a new episode of Magnum P.I. Oh. that's on. <laughs> and uh, that's where the red, red Ferrari is. Of course, it's not his. <laughs> okay, enough of the foolishness there. Uh, okay, so, uh, uh, so you, you may or may not be familiar with this, this. If you struggle with fear, memorize this scripture and we're going to take it apart. Okay, so uh, God, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. And so we first look at this verse and we miss the word spirit, right? Spirit of fear. So what are you saying? Are you saying that uh, fear is a spirit? Yes, I am. God said it. He said he didn't give us a spirit <laughs> of fear. Well, you know, fear is one of those principalities, just like uh, bitterness is. And of course, he has a lot of minions that help in all kinds of areas. But God did not give us a spirit of fear. So that means that fear is not natural. But it comes from the enemy and it's a spirit. Now, I'm not talking about the fight and flight syndrome, right? I mean, you're walking out and all of a sudden this car goes by and your heart leaps in your mouth and rightfully so because you know, that's a natural built-in response uh, to preserving our life. So it's not the fight and flight syndrome, it's the fear that grips and uh, kind of controls our life. Not kind of, it does control our life. Okay, so if he didn't give us a spirit of fear, what did he give us? <laughs> But of power, and uh, what should you think about when you hear the word power? So he gives us power by the Holy Spirit, right? He gives us power by the Holy Spirit. And of love, who should you think about with regard to love? But the Father. You know, it's the Father who loved us so much that he gave us his only begotten Son. So he gave us power by the Holy Spirit. He gave us love, everything that he has, he get, he's given us, and of a sound mind. Well, who do you think that is? Jesus. Who gives us a sound mind? <laughs> you know, Jesus. God has basically given him himself. What more can he give? You know, he's given all of us. So there's no reason to agree with that spirit of fear. There is no fear in love. You've, heard, you've read this scripture thousands of times, maybe even memorized it. If you haven't memorized it, memorize it. <laughs> there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Perfect love. Well, is there anyone on this wor earth that has perfect love? No. no. <laughs> Who has perfect love? God the Father. <laughs> right? It's only realizing God's the, fa God's the Father love that casts out completely fear. So perfect love casts out fear, but fear has what? Torment. Torment. Have you ever been tormented? you probably were in fear, <laughs> right? Fear has torment. He that fear is not made perfect in love, 1 John 4, 18. So you're not made perfect if you have fear. So how do we become more like 
Jesus and more Christ-like is to accept the God the Father's perfect love for us and that casts out all of our fear. Okay? All right. So, we've talked about some things about how to maybe you know, deal with fear, but uh, now we're going to just kind of jump in and look at what fear does uh, to us. So, uh, there's hundreds of phobias, right? You can be afraid of the light, you can be afraid of the dark, you can be afraid of your shadow, you can be afraid of your neighbor, you can be afraid of snakes and spiders and, you know, uh, all the creepy things and maybe not so creepy. Uh, your neighbor might seem to be a little creepy and you can be afraid of them. Um, but fear of man is a big one. What does fear of man prevent you from doing? Hmm? The will of God. Well, the will of God. And what is the will of God? To relationships. Right. So if you're afraid of somebody, if you're afraid of man in general, you wouldn't be up here talking to other people, for one thing, but you wouldn't be evangelizing, you wouldn't be talking to your neighbor, you wouldn't be, there's a guy on the street, you wouldn't go down and talk to him. I mean, why would you talk to him? You know, you're afraid. So fear of man, Satan likes to keep us afraid of other people. What's the worst thing they, they can tell you? I don't want to listen to that. I don't have to listen to that. No, I'm not going to respond. No. You know, okay, fine. You know, I dust off my shoes and go to somebody else's house. You know, it's, it's not what, you know, God uh, wants from us. He wants us to get into the relationships. He wants us to interact with other people. So you got fear of illness, flying, whatever, uh, can lead to lying. And uh, uh, maybe some parents have run into this. Uh, their children might have lied to you. Uh, I don't know if you've experienced that. I had seven. I have seven kids. Uh, I think all of them have lied at one point or another <laughs> because they had the fear of Papa in them. <laughs> And uh, sometimes lying came out. <laughs> I mean, so uh, oftentimes, um, you know, lying is because you don't want to look bad. You, you're afraid of man. You're afraid of whomever. So you lie about it. You steal. Uh, there's lack of action. Uh, fear causes us to be double-minded, like we talked about before. Um, it makes one want to control their environment. A fearful person will try to control everything in their life. Why? Because they're afraid of what might happen if they don't control. So they're very controlling. And so that's one thing, if you're ministering to somebody, uh, somebody and you know that they're a controlling pe person, then think in the back of your mind, there might be an issue with fear here uh, going on. Uh, so it's just a little, little hook that uh, you can you can deal with that, with that principality that might uh, be manifesting. Okay, makes one control. The fear causes us to freeze up, uh, to fear powerless, to feel powerless. Um, it uh, if we have fear, it is difficult to build relationships, as we talked about, or to love. Uh, interesting how the kingdom of darkness is always trying to divide us, right? And, and all of these, always trying to divide us, always trying to separate us from other people. And, uh, you know, with this one as well, um, and always preventing us to love other people. I mean, what did Jesus tell his disciples? You know, a new commandment I give you <laughs> to love one another. How can you love one another when you're fearing them? You can't, right? Uh, can we really trust that other person won't hurt us? So the hurt, the bitterness, the potential for bitterness or potential for being hurt. So, uh, you know, can we really trust who cares? If they do, forgive them. All right, move on. 
You know, it's more important to have that relationship than it is to uh, not be ever be hurt. Uh, we got to have be thick skinned. Was Jesus thick skinned? I mean, his skin was probably as thick as ours, but you know, uh, spiritually he had very thick skin. You know, the Pharisees attacked him and attacked him and attacked him, and he just quoted scripture and got back at them that way. I mean, he, <laughs> you know, it's, so we need to learn to behave like uh, Jesus. It is difficult to make decisions when uh, we are fearful. Matter of fact, I'm going to tell you, never, ever make a decision when you're afraid. If you're afraid that you're not making the right decision, don't make it. Because <laughs> you will make the wrong decision. <laughs> okay, so it's uh, difficult to make the right decision. Uh, go to your Heavenly Father and say, what do you want me to do? I got these two choices. I can either do this or do that. And if you have a helpmate, if you have a spouse, uh, both of you go to the Lord and ask independently. And then after a period of time, come back together and say, well, what did the Lord say? You know, what did the Lord say? And you say, well, I think he's saying, you know, we may not get a verbal I say of the Lord type of thing. It's just an impression most of the time. But, uh, you know, you'll hear, I think the Lord is saying this. And then your spouse will say, yeah, I'm kind of hearing the same thing. Now you got two in agreement with the Lord. That's three. You know that that decision's a good decision, right? Okay. We can't decide which direction to go, of course, with, when we're in uh, fear. All right, you may have been programmed from the womb. Well, how is this? <laughs> so let's say uh, your mom, for example, might have had a near-death experience with, when you were in the womb. That gets carried over to the child, and the child is born, and now that child is super sensitive to fear. And you say, why is that child so much more fearful than my other children? Well, it was because of that event that happened to the mom. Um, uh, or maybe she might have, you know, almost miscarried. Whatever it, it happened to be, that fear gets transferred to the child, that spirit of fear. And uh, the child didn't do anything except come into the world, but there it is. So you got to deal with that, right? So don't be, uh, don't be surprised if in those situations that uh, that particular child might be a little more fearful than the others. But you can deal with it because you have authority over that spirit, right? Okay, the fruit of this, uh, the spirit of fear includes panic attacks or phobias. If you've ever had a panic attack, oh my you know, goodness, I, I, fear just it overcomes me and I can't control myself. I don't know what to do. You know, I'm, I'm, I got a panic attack or I've got this phobia against something. It's a spirit that uh, you need to deal with. Uh, exposure to stressors can make your body respond. Now, uh, fear is one of those things that does, uh, there is now scientific evidence uh, that fear rewires your brain. It rewires your brain to be fearful, <laughs> which is weird, but our brains are, are marvelous and uh, it gets rewired. So the spirit doesn't necessarily have to work overtime all the time. It doesn't necessarily have to be there over all the time, but you can just have a stimulus and that stimulus, your body will respond because your brain has now been programmed. Okay, so that's an issue that we need to address, right? We got to reprogram our minds. Okay, we'll talk about that. Um, the antidote from the principality of fear is trusting God, right? If you find yourself moving into fear, first deal with the spirit and say, ah, I know what you are. I command you to go in the name of Jesus. I am not in agreement with you. And then 
God, I just trust you in this situation. Lord, whatever, whatever the situation is, help me to make the right decision or whatever it happens to be and uh, move on. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Even so, I will defend my own ways before him. Okay, so Job, everybody remember the book of Job. Probably have read the book of Job. Maybe you've read it several times, every time, you know. But uh, here's Job, right? And some people call him Job, but he's not. It's Job, uh, and here's Job. So Job, before, you know, the, the book kind of opens, and it here's Job, and there's this conversation between Satan and in God and um, you know Satan is saying look the reason why Job is prospering so much is because you are protecting him and you've got this hedge around him and all this other stuff meanwhile on earth what is Job doing he is building a fire and early in the morning and he's sacrificing to God uh, and uh, asking for forgiveness for his children were up all hours of the night and they could have been doing something that they weren't supposed to, so I am going to intercede for them and I'm going to sacrifice. And then, uh, you know, time moves on, the chapters move on, and then you finally find out that those kids get wiped out. Right? Kids get wiped out. Uh, then Job says, For the thing I greatly feared, that is the safety of my children, have come upon me. For what I dreaded has happened to me. So what he feared, why was Job sacrificing? Not to be a righteous man necessarily, although, you know, he is called righteous, but because he f feared for his children, right? So that fear came upon him, and uh, now it was Satan that obviously was causing all of this trouble. I mean, Job lost everything, right? And then, of course, the three friends supposedly come and start talking to him. And, oh, okay, because of sin. You know, you got sin in your life. This is why you have all this trouble. Just, you know, repent and ask God to forgive you. You'll be okay. And then finally, finally, his wife comes to him and says, look, Job, you got all these boils. You're just curse God and die. Just get it over with. <laughs> right? And that's when he says, though he slay me, yet I will trust him. <laughs> right? So maybe I should have had those two verses uh, flipped. But anyway. Okay. Satan is able to execute the object of fear if you give him permission. Satan has no powers we talked about before unless you give him permission. The only power he has in, is to lie to you and then you accept his lie and now you're, he has authority over you. So if we don't accept, uh, if we don't give him permission, then we keep ourselves you know, free of his, not free of his temptation because he constantly is tempting us, but uh, you know, free of his power over us, let's put it that way. You need to, need to decide either you're going to believe God or you're going to go into fear. In this situation, I just can't believe God is going to take care of me. So, okay, well, step into fear, please. I mean, that's, just, you know, that's, uh, that's your alternative. <laughs> so either you're going to believe God or you're going to go into fear. Okay, God desires that you face every situation, person, and problem with faith and trust, right? Every situation. Is there any problem in your life that is too difficult for God? It seems I remember Sarah kind of doubting 
and kind of laughing. What? I'm going to have a baby a year from now. <laughs> okay, that's why Isaac is called Isaac. It means laughter, right? Because she... <laughs> And then the response was, is anything too difficult for God? What's wrong with you, woman? <laughs> right? <laughs> of course, nothing's, uh, nothing's too difficult for God. So your circumstance, which is unique, perhaps, but remember that uh, Jesus was tempted in all areas. There was nothing that he wasn't tempted in. No circumstance that he did not, uh, you know, feel when he was here on earth. So... Nothing is impossible. Obedience to the word mixed with faith sets you free. Obedience to the word, right? Obedience, okay, I hear the word, I read the word, I read that this morning, as a matter of fact, and now I'm using it right now. And it was just the thing that I need, but without faith, it means nothing. See, the key ingredient there is faith. You got to know the word. You got to recite the word to the enemy, but if you don't have faith, for some reason the enemy knows when we have faith or not. <laughs> you know, he said, eh, "Yeah, I recognize the word, but uh, there's no power behind that word because you don't have the faith." I mean, that's basically what he's saying, and then he'll continue to torment you. But uh, defeat uh, Satan with the word of God, but you need to believe the word to make it a part of your life. You need to believe, right? Oh, Lord, help my unbelief. Yeah. So how does he know we don't have faith? <laughs> I mean, I answer it. Huh? How does he know? Yeah, because he knows by what comes out of our mouth. Exactly. Faith. Yeah. He's not, he doesn't read our minds. No, he does not read our minds. Okay, so you don't have to worry about him getting in your mind. Right. right? That's, why, that's why when we tell him to go, it has to be verbal. I mean, you can say it in your mind, and God will hear you, but the enemy won't. <laughs> so, you know, you can, you can go in your closet and say, you know, enemy be gone in the name of Jesus, I tell you to go. Or you can do it right in the living room with all your kids around, I mean, it's okay. You know, it, it doesn't matter, but you have to verbalize it. <laughs> And it's the way you say it that the enemy can pick up on, did they really mean that? Did they really mean to tell me to go? I think they want me to stick around. And so they'll test you. <laughs> right? Confess the word alone is not enough. Okay. Okay, winning the battle. How do we win, uh, win this battle? So throw yourself on the absolute care and trust of God. All right, so you got one father who loves you unconditionally and it will do everything for you if we just ask. You got another father, well hopefully he's not your father, but this other dude over here who hates you who wants to maim, steal, and destroy, and kill you, which one are you, are you going to trust? <laughs> I mean, it's an easy choice when you understand the Father's love, <laughs> you know, for you. So he is going to care for you. I will never leave you or forsake you. Um, walk out. Walking out of fear is a process. It's not necessarily immediate. Sometimes it is, but usually it's not uh, because you've got to you've got to deprogram. If you've been in, if you've been walking in fear for a long time, and maybe you've been walking in fear your whole life, think of how many neurons you've got to retrain. <laughs> it's not going to come easy, and you may have to tell the enemy to go. I, and it may be just in your mind, and the enemy may have already gone. It doesn't matter. Keep telling that enemy to go <laughs> because you're programming your mind that this is not what I want to think, too, right? So uh, God will not always immediately remove the problem. Believing God will set things in motion to leave you out of captivity. So when you uh, confess your sin and repent from agreeing with uh, the spirit of fear, 
things are starting to be set into motion to set you free. And it may be, like I said, it may be immediate, but, you know, just believe that God is working and he's working in you. And um, you will probably have to read Ephesians 4 several times. Think on these things, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely. So you got to change your thinking process and think on these things. And, um, you know, after a while, you're telling the enemy to go. You're thinking on, well, okay, whatever is pure. Ah, what's pure? Oh, God is pure. This is pure. Whatever, whatever is good, whatever is, Ill, you know, of good re report. Uh, got to th think on these things. And yes, God is going to take care of me in this situation. Um, how do I know that? Well, past experience has shown me that God is faithful. So, you know, think of those things and uh, you'll, you'll help to start uh, rewiring uh, your brain. By the way, along with this, what also helps you re rewire your brain is praise and worship. <laughs> giving him thanks, being grateful, and praising and worshiping him rewires your brain as well. All right? Saying how good he is, how majestic are you, Lord, in all the earth. Okay. Don't agree uh, with a black and white mentality. It's, it's not either or. It's not, okay, I'm either going to be in fear or I'm going to be in, I'm going to trust God. Um, it's process. For I say, though the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith, as we talked about before. Don't listen when fear comes. Tell the spirit to go. Uh, fear will remain with you. Um, Oh, we we'll remind you of your past that uh, nothing will ever go right. So if you've been in fear, usually things aren't going right. <laughs> but the enemy will come in and say, hey, you know, you're trying to get rid of me, but let me just remind you of your past and remind you of all the troubles that you've seen. And those troubles are just not going to go away it's simply because you told me to go away. You know, they, they, he, the Satan is good and his enemy, his uh, minions are good at reminding us of who we were. That's who we were, <laughs> right? It's not who we are <laughs> or who we are developing and growing to be, right? If you've asked for forgiveness from God, God is faithful and just to forgive us of all of our unrighteousness, and he remembers it no more. Do we believe that? Do, I mean, we remember it, but does, he, he no longer remembers it. <laughs> we got to have the mind of God <laughs> and say, okay, yeah, I was a rotten person back then. Yeah, I was all steeped in fear, but that's not who I am. That's not who God told me to be. I, I mean, I'm, a, I'm his precious child. I am a son and daughter of the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, I am the son of the living God. He loves me so much. I'm the apple of his eye. You know, think of these things. You know, this is who you are in Christ. Your identity in Christ, right, helps you to overcome all of these things, really. And uh, fear drives, faith leads. I gotta do, I gotta do something. You know, I, I just got, uh, look, I'm in fear, so therefore I must do something to overcome this. I gotta relieve this torment that I'm in, so I gotta do something. Faith just says, okay, let's see what God's going to do. 
you know, if, it, get the picture in your mind. I, I know, and I think I may even have the scripture here. But uh, think of Moses, right? He's got this rowdy millions of people following him. <laughs> he gets to the Red Sea. <laughs> And he's got the Egyptian army is coming. They're going to slaughter these uh, Israelites. He's got the, the Red Sea, and it's not a swamp. It is a deep sea, right? <laughs> uh, you know, in the, behind him. And, you know, he says, observe, you know, the... Um, I, you know, you can see uh, Yule Brenner uh, basically saying this in the Ten Commandments, you know. <laughs> Look at what the Lord's going to do for you. <laughs> and, you know, he taps his staff on the water and the water's apart and you can see the fish as you're walking by. Uh, <laughs> I mean, that's the type of faith, <laughs> you know, that we need to have that will part the Red Sea, you know. the. If you have faith of a mustard seed, all you can do is say to this mountain, be thrown into the sea, and it shall be thrown into the sea. Now, most of us aren't going to necessarily move that, a physical mountain, but there are mountains in our lives that we need to move. And you can say, in the name of Jesus, I tell that mountain to go right now in the name of Jesus. And the mountain then will be, uh, will be cleared if you have faith, right? So it's all about faith. Let's talk a little bit about anxiety and stress because we think, oh, I'm not in fear. I'm just anxious about everything. <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> well, anxiety is fear. <laughs> But it's about a particular thing. I'm anxious that my kids are not going to do the right thing. I'm anxious that um, uh, that loan is not going to come in right when I need it in order to buy this house. Um, whatever, the, whatever you're anxious about. I'm anxious that my car is going to break down. Just call it what it is. It's fear. And let's get over it. Um, so be anxious, uh, here we go, Philippians 4 again, All right? So be anxious for nothing but in everything with prayer and with supplication, with thanksgiving, prayer, supplication, with thanksgiving, thank you, Lord. I know this car is going to last me another 100,000 miles. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Let your request be made known to God. God, would you make this car last another 100,000 miles? I've got money kind of stowed away, but it seems like every time I go to buy a car, it's doubled in price, so it seems like an ever-ending chase. Uh, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and mind through Christ Jesus. The peace of God. With all of these things, how do you know you've overcome it? The peace of God. The peace of God, right? Okay. So, it will guard your hearts and your mind. Your heart and your mind. <laughs> okay. Uh, stress is just a modern term for fear that's ongoing. I'm just under a lot of stress. Is somebody sitting on you? Um, well, no, but I, I'm just under a lot of stress. Why are you under stress? <laughs> are you not trusting in God in some area of your life? And the answer is yes, I'm not. Um, I just got all this work to do, you know, at work. I mean, they're expecting me to do two and a half days work in four hours. I just can't do it. Take a deep breath. Ask God to help. Don't worry about it. The work will always be there tomorrow. <laughs> you know, we put un unrealistic expectations on ourselves, don't we? I mean, if we really asked our boss, do you expect me to get this done when this is all this work? 
today. Um, I don't know if he's reasonable. He was, no. You know, this, is, this needs to be done, yes, but does it all need to be done today? Well, probably not. <laughs> okay. Um, so, man's hearts fail them for fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth, for the power of the heavens will be shaken. Of course, it's talking about the end times, but man's hearts failing them. What do you think happens to you when you're under stress? Heart problems. Heart problems, right? I mean, you know, even in, in, the medical profession has figured out that, hey, uh, you need to reduce your stress level. You know, go sit outside, you know, with a glass of wine or whatever, but, you know, enjoy the, the environment. <laughs> Okay, so, um, of course, in the end times, man's hearts will definitely fail them because uh, the mountains will be crumbling and falling on them. Uh, but uh, that's because of the hardness of their hearts to, in the first place. Okay. Yes? Right now, you know, I mean, a lot of fear has increased, you know, the <clears throat> pandemic and now wars. The future, what might happen in the future, things are changing so fast. Right. Should we be concerned with that? No. No. I mean, you can read the newspaper, you can e read your emails, you can go on the websites, you can listen to this commentary or that commentary. Not going to change a thing. Right? It'll change you. It'll change you, yes. It will put fear and stress and all of these things, you know, and anger and... All these things will pile up on you, so let it go. Let it go. Trust in the Lord. Didn't he say he was going to take care of us, regardless of what happens? Even if Biden becomes an authoritarian like Trudeau? Um, okay, we're here. <laughs> Welcome to the new world order. <laughs> right? <laughs> Hallelujah. Jesus is coming back soon. <laughs> now I don't know you know I don't know if it's now but it seems it's getting getting closer for sure alrighty but you know fear not I mean fear not Jesus is with us he will take care of us uh, even if they want us want us to go to Bitcoin uh, we can still trade amongst ourselves <laughs> Uh, okay, so here's some uh, other issues, health issues. Of course, you you know heart disease, all kinds of heart disease. Uh, your immune system is suppressed when we are under stress and when we are under fear. Our immune system gets suppressed, and what happens when your immune system gets suppressed? It ain't good, <laughs> right? Your immune system is your defense system in your body to take care of foreigners, uh, aliens that are, are not supposed to be there, like bacteria and viruses and all this other stuff. So when uh, the pandemic came and people were in fear and under stress because of the pandemic, their immune systems were being suppressed so that they could get the bug. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> right? <laughs> So, um, and when your immune system suppressed, you see more cancers, for example, uh, appearing because it's your immune system that keeps, we, look, we all, all the time, we've got these rogue cells that are just, you know, they just went rogue. Well, your immune system, when it's working properly, goes along and says, oh, that's a rogue cell, I'm going to chew him up, and it chews it up. Um, but if your immune system's not working the way it's supposed to, then it can allow those cells to get under, uh, out of control. Heart disease, allergies. Well, I'm just, I got allergies to pollen, to ragweed, to Christmas trees, you know, whatever it happens to be. Um, well, check to see if you're not in fear of or something that is causing that. Uh, asthma uh, is very specific. Uh, asthma is a fear of abandonment by the father, uh, for example. 
So um, that can be dealt with by dealing with abandonment issues uh, over, your, over your dad. Multiple chemical sol uh, sensitivities is another one that joins with occultism, which is our next topic. Uh, okay, so how do we overcome? Totally trusting God. Uh, stop, stop trying to fix things or people. Give them over to God. So, you know, doing this with our kids is the hardest thing as a parent you will ever do. You change from being a caretaker to being a consultant. And guess who has, has to ask for the consulting? <laughs> it's your child. <laughs> now, we can drop hints, <laughs> but they usually don't take our... Now, if you just do this, you know, your life will come into, into place and everything will be fine. You know, it's just not going to work. So you've got to be more of a consultant. And what do we do with our kids at that point? We lift them up to God and say, God, you got to zap them. No, <laughs> you, lift <them. laughs> you lift them up to God and you put them in his hands because you did your job. You raised them up in the way that they should go. And now when they are older and old, uh, they will not depart from it. Right. So you put them in God's hands and look, God, you take care of them, put a hedge of protection around them. Uh, lead them in the way that they should go, um, and uh, you rest in peace. Because if he took care of you, he will take care of your kids, right? Okay, so we become a consultant, not uh, the mom and dad still. All right. Okay, so Moses said unto the people, Fear not, stand still, see, I knew I had the scripture, see the salvation of the Lord. So as the Red Sea was parting, um, uh, Yule Brenner is making this. Uh, Charlton, oh yeah, Charlton Heston, not Yule Brenner. Thank you. Be old. Uh, yeah, I guess we all need staff so we can depart the waters. I think it was the staff, really. <laughs> Say, okay, so uh, Psalm 46 says, be still and know that I am God. It doesn't say be active and know. It says be still and know that I am God. How do we know God when we're still? We can't hear the still, small voice of God if our minds are all cluttered with things. We have to be still. You know, one of the hardest things to do sometimes is to clear, I mean, not we clear our minds so we can get a mantra and repeat that over and over again. You know, that's another, that's from the enemy. It's being still and knowing that he is God. One of the things I love to do, and we don't have any high mountains here, is to go up on top of a mountain and just be still. Say, so, okay, is there anything you want to tell me, you know, God? Is say, yeah, let me know. Hey, any, and just allow him to speak to you. Allow him to, for his peace to come over you. And uh, we get to know him that way in a more intimate way. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. The deadly pestilence. He will deliver you. You keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Okay. Perfect peace if your mind is stayed on him. Okay. Now, after all that, <laughs> it's time. We got a little bit of time for a little bit of ministry. Now, the ministry list is long. <laughs> Because there's a lot of fears, <laughs> a lot of different things uh, that we uh, can fear, uh, can be afraid of. But uh, do business with the generational. Don't forget the generational curses uh, that come uh, either towards God, self, or others. Uh, we've got panic, panic attacks, phobias, judgment, or uh, punishment by God. We can fear the judgment of God. Um, Diseases, cancers, death, dying, 
all this is fear of, of course, loss of life, loss of spouse or children, rejection, fear of rejection, abandonment, fear of man, failure, poverty, change, unknown, uh, fear of unhealthy, well, or unhealthy fear of God. There is a healthy fear of God, and that keeps us on the straight and narrow, then there is an unhealthy fear of God. Uh, God lo Remember, God loves us, <laughs> right? And he doesn't want us to be afraid of him uh, from the point of view of, you know, backing away that, gee, you're going to smite me at any moment. Uh, but uh, there is that reverence, that, uh, that fear that brings knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Okay, fear of evil, not being saved, uh, loss of salvation, financial collapse. This is a big one. Yeah. I'm not, I don't have enough money in the bank. Well, they're going to take it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fear of government or authorities. Uh, we don't fear Trudeau. He's a little m minion of a guy. <laughs> Nothing to fear there. <laughs> but as uh, fear itself as okay criticism fear of criticism humiliation dread worry anxiety suspicion fear uh, behind perfectionism control being controlled family fear of family members uh, i don't want to get together for this reunion because there's a joe there that i just don't i don't, don't like him he's gonna say something that's gonna offend me be with the family members anyway. I mean, it's, it's okay. All right. So uh, allergic reactions and toxins, uh, night tremors and terrors, uh, fear of the dark war and terrorism, uh, and uh, thousands of other unknown fears. So take some time if you've recognized anything or recognize as we were talking anything in your life. Repent, ask God to forgive, and then I'll take care of the spirits. So, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, that you are indeed the Lord of Lords, and you are King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So, by the authority given to me by Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit, I come against all generational curses due to fear Lord, anything that's come down through our generations, uh, Lord, we, we break that right now. I break those generational curses in the name of Jesus. And I come, whether it's a generational curse against God or self or others, Lord, I come against that right now and I break it in the name of Jesus. And all of the various uh, manifestations of the spirit of fear, Lord, I come against you right now in the name of Jesus, and I tell you that you must go right now in the name of Jesus. All spirits related to panic attacks or to, to uh, um, tremors or to anxiety or dread, or uh, uh, I come against you in the name of Jesus right now. All the uh, fear of uh, sickness and diseases, I come against you and I tell you, you must go. Fear against rejection and abandonment, I tell you that you must go in the name of Jesus. Fear of man or failure or poverty or change or uh, fear of the unknown, I tell you that you must go. Unhealthy fear of God, I tell you that you must go. Fear of evil, I tell you that must go. Fear of anything related to finances, I tell you that you must go right now in the name of Jesus. Fear of government or authority, I tell you that you must go. Criticism, fear of criticism or criticism of others, I tell you that you must go. Humiliation, I tell you that you embarrassment or shame, I tell you that you must go right now in the name of Jesus. Fear of suspicion or mistrust or control, I tell you that you must go in the name of Jesus. Any perfectionism right now or criticism, I tell you that you must go in the name of Jesus. Fear of being controlled, I tell you that you must go. Fear of all family members, I tell you that you must go in the name of Jesus. 
all allergic reactions, any allergies, I tell you that you must go fear of those things. I tell you that you must go in the name of Jesus and I, I, and I uh, pray a, a blessing and a healing right now of all allergies in the name of Jesus. All tight uh, night uh, terrors and torment. If you can't sleep at night in peace, then you probably have night terrors. I tell you that you must go right now in the name of Jesus. And uh, anything that has not been named, any fear of anything else, I tell you that you must go right now in the name of Jesus. And we give you all the praise and all the glory and all of the honor so we thank you, Lord, for what you've done. We thank you for what you're doing in our lives. And we uh, just give you all of the praise and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, next time is occultism. Uh, we'll, we'll cover occultism next time. <laughs>